Hello everyone, this is Warhawk Beyond 2040 and welcome to a very special bonus edition of the Jazz Albums Review Series. Hope we're okay and hope we've all had a lovely Christmas and we are now in the final day of 2023, the last day of the year and today I am going to be counting down my top 10 favourite albums of 2023. Not an easy challenge. This was a very difficult task for me, putting together the top 10 albums of the year, especially as we've had so much incredible music that's come out over the last 12 months of 2023. But at the same time, this was a lot of fun revisiting some of these albums. And if you see an album that's a little bit lower, it's not because I didn't like them. I love every single one of these albums that I've chosen. It's just, you've got to put them somewhere. So, you know, there's not really much I can do about that. But, you know, this list that I've put together, my top 10 favorite albums of 2023, these are the albums I've chosen and the ones I consider to be the absolute best albums of the year. So there's a little bit of everything there's some live albums, there's some hidden gems, there's some surprises, you know, there's all sorts of different kind of albums that I've compiled for my top 10 albums of 2023. And also after I've done my top 10 favourite albums of 2023, I'll also do some honourable mentions as well, so the ones that didn't make the cut. So with that all said, let's get straight into it and let's kick things off at number 10, Jacob Young, Eventually. So this is Jacob Young's trio recording for the ECM label, which features the rhythm section of Matt Ellison on bass and Audion Clavier on drums. And this was an album that I was waiting and hoping that Jacob Young would eventually put out, a trio recording. And my wish came true, and this album absolutely delivered. All three musicians sound fantastic individually, and together they just sound absolutely amazing. And this was certainly one of the more pleasant surprises of 2023, and an amazing recording. Great bass work from Ellison, great drumming from Clavier, and great guitar playing as always from Young. And a very beautiful album, a very laid back album, but at the same time, highly enjoyable and definitely one of the absolute best albums of 2023. So there you have it at number 10, Jacob Young, eventually. Fantastic. And coming in at number nine is Ralph Towner at First Light. So for those who have followed Ralph Towner's career, Ralph Towner has put out a number of solo guitar recordings, but this one could very well be Ralph Towner's absolute best. This is Ralph Towner at his most intimate, at his most melodic, with some of the most gorgeous guitar playing of his career, and he's featured on classical guitar, and it's a beautiful album from start to finish. And this album, when it came out, really took me by surprise because I was under the impression that Ralph Towner, for all intents and purposes, was done. You know, I didn't think we would see another album from him, but I'm really glad that he came through and put out another fine masterpiece. And anybody who hasn't heard this album, I highly recommend you check it out. It's absolutely fantastic. So there you have it at number nine. Ralph Towner at First Light. And coming in at number eight is a trio recording, Wolfgang Musville, Dance of the Elders. Now, I've been a fan of Wolfgang Musville for a really long time. He's one of my favourite guitar players, and he's had this trio comprised of bassist Scott Coley and drummer Brian Blade, who has played with Wolfgang Musville on and off for the last 20 plus years now and this is a very different kind of album for Wolfgang Musville. It's still very much a trio recording but it leans much closer to classical music. 
Wolfgang Musfield is playing a lot more acoustic and classical guitars. He's still featured on electric, but this is a much more acoustic kind of album as compared to his previous albums that he's put out for the ECM label. It's a beautiful recording and it's absolutely amazing. All three musicians sound incredible. Scott Coley, rock solid as always on bass. Brian Blade, what more can you ask for? He's one of the greatest drummers on the planet. And Wolfgang Musfield, he's just on fine form. And I've always said that as great as Musfield is on electric guitar, I feel his voice really shines the brightest on acoustic guitar. And it really shines on this album in particular. It's absolutely out of this world. So there you have it at number eight, Wolfgang Musfield, Dance of the Elders. Beautiful stuff. And coming in at number seven, and this is another trio recording for the ECM label. And this is from one of the true legends of guitar playing. John Schofield, Uncle John's Band. So this is a double trio recording for the ECM label from John Schofield. And it features the rhythm section of longtime collaborator and drummer Bill Stewart and bassist Vicente Archer, who replaces the legendary Steve Swallow. And this is only John Schofield's third album for the ECM label and his second in the trio format. And to me, this is certainly one of John Schofield's best trio projects in recent years. And I've always said that John Schofield is at his absolute best in trio. This is where he's guitar playing and his voice shines the brightest. And what more can you say really about this incredible trio? Bill Stewart, you know, he sounds amazing as always on the drum kits. And this is an environment where he absolutely shines. And for Sete Archer, to me, is probably the standout musician of the trio his bass playing is just rich thick and he has such a large presence on this album and he just makes everybody on this album just sound incredible john schofield on top form as always with some incredible guitar playing and to me as i said already john schofield is one of the absolute true legends of guitar playing and this certainly doesn't get any better than this so there you have it at number seven, John Schofield, Uncle John's Band. Excellent album, highly recommended for all John Schofield fans. And coming in at number six is an album from a musician who not only surprised me, but completely blew me away with her playing. To me, she is one of the absolute best piano players on the scene today and she is the whole package a fantastic pianist and an incredible composer and i was very honored to get the call to talk about her album and as a musician she's not known to audiences but i'm really hoping that will change soon so at number six is the lovely and very talented pianist Marie Ginocchio Wonderland. So this album is self-released by Marie Ginocchio. All of the compositions are written and composed by Ginocchio herself. And you can definitely hear influences of Chick Career in her playing, but she is by no means a Chick Career clone. She is very much her own person. And this sounds very similar to the electric band's Eye of Beholder, but as more of a solo piano recording. Unbelievable album. I've listened to this many times and I'm constantly finding new things every time I hear it. And it's one of those albums. It continues to get better and better with every listen. And I'm really excited to see where Marie Ginocchio goes next. And I'm looking forward to seeing what she has up her sleeve so there you have it at number six marie ginocchio wonderland fantastic highly recommended to everybody out there who are fans of solo piano unbelievable one of the best debut albums i've heard 
in quite a while. Fantastic stuff. And coming in at number five is Trio Zone featuring Ollie Uskinskin, Carl Orr, and Rob Staten. If you're a fan of Trio albums, this is definitely one for you and certainly one to definitely check out. It's got influences of John Schofield, Bill Frisell, Tony Williams. It's all there. But what this trio does is they don't try to emulate those guys. They take those influences and make it their own and come up with their own voice and identity. And I've seen these guys live. They were absolutely fantastic. Oli Uskinskin sounds incredible, as always, on drums. Great guitar playing from Carl Orr and rock solid bass work from Rob Statham. This is three incredible musicians at the top of their game and they just sound absolutely tight and highly recommend you check this album out. I was very grateful to pick up a copy from the man himself, one of the nicest guys I've ever met and as I said, an amazing drummer as well. So there you have it at number five, Trio Zone, Ollie Uskinskin, Carl Orr, and Rob Staten. Fantastic stuff. And coming in at number four is Soft Machine, Other Doors. Soft Machine are a legendary jazz rock band who have been around since the late 60s, and they are still going very strong to this day as we speak. And this album. Although a bit more laid back than their previous recording, Hidden Details, it still packs a hell of a punch and retains all of the classic hallmarks that we all know Soft Machine for. So the lineup features John Etheridge on guitars, Theo Travis on tenor and soprano saxophones, flutes, Fender Rhodes piano and electronics. Fred Felonius Baker on fretless bass and the legendary John Marshall on drums and a special guest appearance from former Soft Machine member Roy Badminton who's featured on two tracks. What more can you say really? This album absolutely burns and everybody on this album is on top musical form. John Etheridge is in full beast mode on guitars. Theo Travis, he just burns on tenor and soprano saxophones, but very soothing on flutes and also delivers textual colour on the Fender Rhodes piano and provides lots of atmospheric electronics. Fred Felonius Baker, a rock solid bass player with lots of jaw dropping bass lines. And John Marshall, fantastic as always on the drums. And the same with Roy Babington as well. Absolutely rock solid on bass. And this would turn out to be the final appearance of John Marshall as he would retire after this album was completed. And we sadly lost John Marshall as he passed away back in September 2023. So a nice fitting tribute for the legendary John Marshall who really goes out on a real high and delivers quite possibly in my opinion the best drumming of his career and this is an amazing soft machine album i've seen soft machine many times and they never disappoint whether they're live or in the studio these guys continue to keep getting better and better and i can tell you now they're showing no signs of slowing down fantastic so there you have it at number four Soft Machine, Other Doors. Excellent album. And coming in at number three is Hiromi, Sonic Wonderland. So Sonic Wonderland features the debut of Hiromi's brand new band, Sonic Wonder, which features Hiromi on piano and keyboards, Hadrian Froude on bass, Gene Coy on drums and Adam O'Farrell on trumpet. So this is kind of like a nod to her old band, Sonic Bloom, which was more of a heavy guitar driven band. And this is the first time in many years that Hiromi has returned to the band format after many years of recording and releasing solo piano, 
collaborations and string recordings. And this sees Hiromi returning more to her fusion electronic roots. And it's a very good album. It's a slow grower. It takes a bit of time to grow on you, but it's really good. She does come up with some wacky sounds, which at times does sound like a Super Mario Brothers video game. <laughs> but at the same time, it's very enjoyable and takes a few listens, takes a bit of getting used to, but it's very enjoyable. I got to catch this band live and they were just absolutely amazing. And one thing I've always said about Hiromi, which I've always admired and respected her for, she's not afraid of trying out new things. She's constantly reinventing herself and she's always pushing the envelope. And these guys just sound absolutely amazing. If you've got Hadrian Farood in your band, you know it's going to be good. And he definitely doesn't disappoint here. Adam O'Farrell creates lots of textual atmospheric sounds on his trumpet. And Gene Coy, he's just an absolute powerhouse on the drums. And Hiromi, she sounds amazing as always on piano and keyboards. So there you have it. At number three, Hiromi's Sonic Wonder, Sonic Wonderland. Fantastic album, one of the best albums of 2023. And coming in at number two is Pat Smuffini, Dreambox. So this is a solo guitar recording, and it's an environment that Pat Muffini is no stranger to, and it's the first time he's put out a new solo guitar recording since 2011's What's It All About?, but this is a different kind of solo guitar recording for Pat Muffini. This features Pat Muffini on solo electric guitar. So the results are very pleasant and unbelievable. And Pat Muffini is also overdubbed on baritone guitar as well, but it's very much lead electric guitar. And it's a mixture of originals and standards. A very beautiful intimate recording as much as i love pat buffini in all of his groups and trios and duo projects there is no better listening experience than pat buffini in solo guitar this is an environment where he's at his absolute best and this is where his voice shines the brightest i love pat buffini i love everything he does but this is where he's truly the man and this album certainly was one that I've been wanting to see from Pat Muffini for a really long time. I love the solo acoustic albums. They're legendary, but I was really hoping for a solo electric guitar album, and I wasn't disappointed. Pat Muffini, for my money, has never put out a bad album. His albums are all different, and what I've always loved about him is he's not afraid of trying out new things. And he does this once again. So if you're a fan of solo guitar recordings, this is definitely one worth checking out. So there you have it at number two. Pat Muffini, Dreambox. Absolutely lovely. Fantastic album. And finally, coming in at number one is the Chick Corea Electric Band. The future is now. So this is a double live recording featuring the classic lineup of the electric band, which is comprised of Chick Corea on piano, Dave Weckl on drums, John Patitucci on bass, Eric Marinfall on saxophones, and Frank Gambali on guitars. Doesn't get any better than the electric band, who, in my opinion, are one of the greatest jazz fusion bands of all time, and they helped redefine the genre during the mid-80s to the early 90s. Now, although this double live recording doesn't feature any new material, I felt that this album deserved to be number one simply because of who it is. Chick Corea has been one of my all-time favourite musicians for many, many years. He's in my jazz mount Rushmore with Pat Smuffini, Keith Jarrett and Miles Davis. And as we all know, we sadly lost Chick Corea back in 2021. So I thought, what better way to pay tribute to the man himself than to have one of his greatest ensembles of all time 
in the number one spot. And I've been a huge fan of the electric band for a really long time. And I always hoped that they would put out a live recording. So my wish was granted and it's finally came true. And here we have a brand new electric band double live recording. So this features live performances from their 2016, 2017 and 2018 shows. And it features material from Beneath the Mask, Eye of the Beholder, To the Stars, Paint the World, and a track from their self-titled debut recording. These guys absolutely burn. They play like machines. They really give it their all. And I was very lucky to catch these guys during their 2017 tour. And it was one of the best shows I have ever seen. Seven songs they played for three hours unbelievable so there you have it my number one album for 2023 the chick career electric band the future is now double life recording unbelievable stuff fantastic and before we wrap things up i'm going to quickly give some honorable mentions for best albums of 2023 Julian Lage, The Layers. Bobo Stenson Trio, Sphere. Keiko Matsui, Euphoria. Kurt Rosenwinkel, Undercover, live at The Village Vanguard. Radko Jacker, Archtop Avenue. Lage Lund, Most Peculiar. Hedvig Mollestad, Weegens. Brown Bromberg, The Magic of Moonlight. Jeff Lorber Fusion, The Drop. Chris Potter, Live at Village Vanguard, Got the Keys to the Kingdom. Magnus Ostrom Group, A Room for Travellers. And finally, Vince Mendoza, Olympians. So there you have it, my top 10 favourite albums of 2023 and my honourable mentions for 2023 as well. Do you agree with this list or do you have your own favourite top 10 albums? of 2023 there's no right or wrong answer we all have our top 10 favorites of the year and you know what to do guys hit the like button hit the subscribe button leave your thoughts and comments down below and i will see all of you next time for another edition of the jazz albums review series happy new year i hope you all have a great new year's eve and i will see all of you in 2024 so until then, take care, everybody, and stay safe. And once again, as always, much appreciated. Thanks for listening.